Okay, so what else do we need? We need um, Z, the threshold. I'm going to call that zero. We need um, TB. Uh, where we, excuse me, we need um, TS, uh, the sample time, which I'm going to call uh, again 1.25 and 10 to the minus 8. 10 to the minus um, 5, and B, we call B, and then 0, let's say this is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5.
So this is this provides um, an interesting comparison. This is the same probability of error result we got last time, but last time I used n zero uh, of two point five times the minus five. That was twice as strong going. So it, um, it seems at first like polar NRZ is better than BPSK. We'll talk a bit about this next time, but that appearance is misleading because um, polar NRZ looks like this, like a square wave, and BPSK looks like this. So here, the amplitude is constant, the energy you're expending is always constant. Over here, the energy you're expending, so here's one. Here, here uh, you're always at one, the amplitude is always at one. Here, the amplitude spends considerable time less than one. So, in this signal, you're expending considerably less energy than this one. In fact, in particular, you can show that you're expending exactly half the amount of energy to send this one as that one. Um, so, in the end, we can show that um, here you're expending twice as much energy but you can tolerate noise that's twice as strong. So in that sense, uh, intuitively, these two signals perform the same on an energy per bit basis. Uh, so that's, that's uh, I just wanted to uh, point that out. We will discuss that a little more probably next class. Okay, any questions? Generally, you can follow this fairly straightforward procedure in order to get probability of error. 